Unlike permutations, when you talk about combinations, you're talking about order doesn't matter. So suppose I have 14 watercolor pencils and I want to take three of them with me. If this were a permutation, I'd simply do 14 times 13 times 12, but I'm just throwing three of them in my bag. I don't care which one's first, second, or third. That's where I need a combination. In combinations of things, order doesn't matter. It's all the same. Like in the lottery, if you match the numbers, it doesn't matter if you match them in the right order. If you're talking about Zoom breakout rooms and there's going to be four students in a room, it doesn't matter which student is first, second, third, or fourth. It's just four people in a room and there's no order to them. To find the number of combinations, let's start with the number of permutations. Suppose the three pencils you pick are just called A, B, C. Then how many different ways are there to arrange the letters A, B, C? Permutations, A, B, C, A, C, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, C, A, B, C, B, A, there's six in total. Combinations of A, B, C, well, it's just A, B, C, it doesn't matter how you write it. These are all equivalent to this when order doesn't matter. So you see there's six of these for each one of these. What that means is, suppose I grab these three pencils. Well, for each way I can grab three of them, or order doesn't matter, that means there's six ways that I can grab them where the order does matter. And that's going to be true for every single one of these. So you can make the conclusion that there's six times as many permutations as combinations. 364 different combinations of ways I can grab three pencils. So of all of my many 14 colors, that means there are 364 ways I could grab any three of them. The number six isn't fixed in, fixed in stone, though. That came about as a result of the fact that we picked three of them. Let's see what happens if I go a little higher. The number of permutations of four objects out of 14 is 14 choices for the first one, times 13 for the second, times 12 for the third, times 11 for the fourth gives you a total of 24,024 total permutations, and isn't that a fun number? So let's look at the number of combinations. It's not very difficult to see what I'm doing here, is all of these start with A, and then they start with B, or they start with C, or they start with D. All of these start with B, and then I put A, C, and D separately. So I could do the same thing, start them all with C. Now list all of them that start with A, then all of them that start with B, and all that start with D. In total, you'll find there's 24 total permutations of getting A, B, C, D, whereas the combinations are all the same. So again, any four watercolor pencils I pick, for every one of those that's a combination, there's going to be 24 total permutations. So there's 25 times as many permutations as combinations. So I take the number of permutations, I divide that by 24, then I get 1,001 total combinations of picking four out of 14 watercolor pencils. Now let's start seeing if we see what the pattern is. N equals 14, meaning I have 14 total watercolor pencils. If I pick three of them, the number of combinations is the number of permutations, 14, 13, 12, divided by the number of permutations there are for three items. So three times two times one, recall that equals six. Because if you go back to this, there were three choices for the first one. Each of those had two choices for the second. Each of those had only one choice for the third, which gives you a total of six. Similarly, if you are having four of them, you get four spaces now to choose from them. So 14, 13, 12, 11, four total spaces, four numbers multiplied. And in the denominator, you're going to have four choices for the first letter, A, B, C, or D. Each of those has three choices for the second letter, and then two choices for the letter after that, and then one after that. So you can predict that K equals 5, you're going to have 14 times 13 times 12 times 11 times 10, just extend that one more, over 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And if you guess that, ah, that messed up on me. So we get a formula that looks like this, where two pieces of this are kind of probably familiar from permutations. This was the number of permutations, and then if we divide that by the number of ways there are to permute the k objects, like here we got 6 or 24 or whatever, we get the total number of combinations. For example, a local bakery has 16 types of donuts, and I'm in the mood to eat four of them, all different kinds. Again, I'm not going to repeat the same kind of donut because I don't want to eat two Boston creams when I could eat a Boston cream and then a jelly donut or whatever. And there'll be all different kinds, so no repeats. 
how many combinations of overindulgence in total are there? Now, don't judge me. I'm going to eat four donuts, but just, just back off and do the math, okay? N equals 16, K equals four. So put this in the formula. You have 16 factorial over four factorial, 16 minus four factorial. Again, remember that this is factorial of K. This, you have to do the subtraction before that. So you get 16 times 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 times 11. At this point, if you don't have a computer program to help you work this out, just notice that if you expand the 16 factorial all the way out, and you expand the 4 factorial out, and you expand the 16 minus 4 is 12 factorial all the way out, you're going to be able to cancel some things. These numbers get really big really fast, so writing it all out to cancel it makes this a lot easier to calculate. There are a total of 1,820 different purchases of four donuts I can get. And before my cat wanders back in the frame, let's just call it good.